All right, Jose, are you ready to start? Already? Yeah, I'm ready. Thanks. Uh -huh. So let's get started with our Q&A. Thank you for everybody for coming to the gallery. Um, I think we're pretty super early adopters, so there were some technical difficulties, but we appreciate you hanging in there. And um, joining us for this this moment in the metaverse. <laughs> um, so Jose, do you want to tell us a little bit about what Stars Align means? Yeah. Hey guys, uh, this is Jose DiGregorio. I am guest 35 uh, in the Bear uh, Avatar. Um, so, um, and thank you so much, uh, Courtney, otherwise known as Flutes, for um, for organizing this event. Um, and uh, thank you so much to Mexa Clouds who um, created this um, NFT art space that allows me to display my work. Thank you, uh, thank you guys. And thank you to Benali for, um, for creating all the amazing graphics that you have and kind of smoothing some of the rough patches. Appreciate you guys. Um, so uh, um, this stars align um, the theme, uh, of course, uh, when we first um, investigated the space, you know, uh, it takes on um, it takes up a number of different um, uh, environments. So, of course, by way of just show, showcasing a number of pieces, you have the sort of gallery format. But I was seeing it also, of course, as sort of a planetarium. You you have this kind of an outdoor um, you have this outdoor. Um, uh, environment with uh, a really nice meditative ambiance and um, and so all those things kind of led themselves to um, an extension of the aesthetics that I already do which is you know these um, kind of uh, transcendental uh, pieces that allude to things that are more infinite so uh, I felt that stars align starts to uh, well not only delve into that but it also um, it can be sort of a metaphor for alignment of the analog and the digital, uh, which is, you know, me being a, a sort of the analog artist who creates work that alludes to uh, digital, uh, these digital realms, you know, like whether, you know, people that have experience with Illustrator and with other programs or whatever it is can create these patterns of themselves, but because these are all hand drawn with the illusion of it being um, digital. I felt that that title lent itself, you know, stars aligning, you know, the, 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 the things, you know, different worlds converging, that kind of thing. Um, would you mind just kind of guiding the way and taking us around the room so we can look at some of your pieces while you're talking? Sure. sure. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a great idea. Okay, so maybe what we can do is I'm facing the large piece, which is uh, the central piece is the NFT, which is available now. It will be on auction for um, uh, for the next week, um, uh, and along with um, with the NFT purchase, you would receive a uh, a uh, an archival print along that. So. Um, I don't know if perhaps I'll just start moving forward and if you guys all want to tag along, I think it'd be kind of cool to create this like Pied Piper effect. I don't know if that, uh, fuck it, let's do it. So I'm chasing I'm just, the bear. I'm chasing the bear. Yeah, right chasing the bear, man. So, um, let's go on our talk. Our talk. So I'm basically, I'll, I'll send, I'll like, let me run to this door, this doorway. So, um, so and then I'll turn around and face y'all. Um, so, um, so this, yeah, so of course this initial piece, if uh, for those of you that are familiar with my aesthetics, I tend to use this, um, this octagon template uh, as the basis for so much, so for so many of my pieces. So, um, which is why it was, I felt like it was a fitting piece as the, you know, the um, inaugural NFT um, as the center point, because from this, um, so many of my works are created. So maybe what we can do is to your right, if you're facing the NFT, uh, perhaps we can head over here to the right and start to kind of like 
we can just go over maybe a couple of examples of some pieces. Um, so, um, so with with the titling and you know the uh, with the work, there's going to be a lot of. Uh, I started to investigate this idea of omission of lines to sort of, uh, whereas you know a completed piece with all lines attached create this notion of harmony, and I like the idea of kind of splitting things or omitting so that um, so that you are able to um, uh, kind of suggest the lines like you can finish the lines off uh, it, you know like creating alignment essentially I mean so um, so these pieces are all originally drawn and um, and there was a process involved in order to make that and make it make sense for the space so um, so uh for instance i isolated the pattern on photoshop and was able to embellish the color gradients that you see in the background um th those on the paintings themselves because i used a an iridescent glitter uh, uh paint that takes on sort of the feel of like automotive enamel um but it doesn't lend itself uh, to photograph well so um so i was able to to isolate these patterns and Photoshop them into place, and then um, and then ultimately make get them so that they made sense, um, uh, you know, in the space itself. So um, I'm gonna, you know, um, what what you're gonna hear with most of these pieces, and I'm kind of walking over maybe towards the banner and looking up at the banner that's closest to us. Um, you know, you're, uh, a lot of the pieces you see are essentially that same idea. Now, when you when you look up at the banner, that banner um, is uh, stretched out uh, to accommodate the banner. But I have drawn this pattern a number of times before, and um, so it's not merely the mandala as uh, or the octagon as the piece, but rather. You know, um, looking at just uh, general line work and then seeing what that, how that aligns. So, with the banners, you know, what you have are these uh, kind of elongated shapes, which I felt like lent themselves really well to to the space. Just tell us a little bit about how you got into this. Like, how did you reach the aesthetic and style that you use today? Was it? easy did it come to you overnight was it a year-long process 10 year long process yeah and and you're asking how i got to create geometric patterns correct yes okay yeah so um i've been doing geometric pattern work for gosh i want to say over 10 years now um you know i've been uh you know creating art i you know per se like um uh, as uh, that's been my pursuit for about uh, almost 25 years now and it started I started working figuratively um, you know I'm a you know I'm a, a Latino artist and I had initially tried to create uh, work that was uh, kind of reflective of my experience but I found that I couldn't like you know I, I wasn't as um, I didn't receive get as much pleasure from the work itself so I started to um, noticed that as far as aesthetics were concerned i really um it line work really resonated with me and it did it wasn't necessarily geometric pattern work it was just um it was sort of akin to you know if when you're getting a a, a large tattoo piece um uh you know you might go for a couple sessions and that first session is just going to be line work and then you're going to go in a second time in uh in order to fill in the tattoo work and and i was always mostly uh that line work mostly resonated with me um even if it looked uh unfinished i guess so like creating form out of pattern was something that i just i i got pleasure from making and i got pleasure from looking at so i i think i you know my work has evolved uh over the years but um I, but i think i kind of hit this this point where I really like, like I said about ten years ago, where I really uh, like this resonated with me. This this style of work where I felt like um, I could finish it and just um, 
kind of absorb myself into it, if that makes sense. How long would you say it took you to really nail the layering of spray paint that you are kind of masterful at? Oh man, that, I mean, that's really kind of you to say. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I will start by saying that I'm, I'm just like forever learning, um, forever, you know, like improving upon uh, what I already know. I mean, that's that's kind of needless to say, but um, but it's um, but it, I'm actively thinking that. Like, I might be fulfilled for now with the aesthetics that I'm working with, but I do, um, I you know, like a few years from now, you know, like I could very well look at this and see the the sort of the shortcomings I had, um, and sort of the and then building on my knowledge get to a place where I feel even even more proficient in in my work so um, you know yeah and so that's something like we're in the past like if I were to see um, murals or or uh, gradient work that I did like seven eight years ago at that time um, I wasn't as um, I wasn't quite as bold uh, with um, some of the color um, gradients and so they fulfilled the sort of the vision that I had for the work. So um, it just keeps expanding. And then sometimes I like to get weird with colors that don't, that might not uh, uh, follow a, uh, kind of follow a harmonious flow. Um, but then that more recently I've, I've grown to just enjoy sort of the simple like rainbow gradient, you know, you going from a, you know, like a deep teal to a deep pink or purple, so. That you learned from someone else? Did you have a mentor? Um, is it something that you discovered through experimenting? How did you know which cans to use? Yeah, yeah. you know, wow, uh, that's a that's a good question. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I wish off the top of my head, I can just say, uh, name off a list of, of like, particular artists but there you know there are just so many they're they're really i mean and it's too you know from the people that i very much admire um, and that i put on the pedestal you know so somebody like uh, felipe pantone comes to mind um uh but down to all my peers that are that i live amongst you know um so uh, so yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it just rain, it, it just ranges and it doesn't have to be like, like pattern work or color work. Um, that is, of course, my, uh, um, that is, you know, those are my aesthetic sensibilities. But, um, but being that I uh, sort of come from uh, like a punk rock, uh, heavy metal background when I was a kid, and, and I was a kid a long time ago, uh, you know, like in the eighties and skate culture, those are the, those, that was like my art gallery, you know, uh, where I would look at album covers and look at, um, skate art and, um, and those sort of like created the beginnings of like what was possible. Like, you know, um, that things that are grotesque, for instance, can be art, even if they're not palatable. So I think those, even though I was not an artist growing up or in the sense like I didn't make artwork and didn't see myself as artistically proficient until I was in my mid twenties. Um, it, you know, um, I think I was already sort of without realizing it, kind of priming myself for, um, for aesthetic taste that, that is, um, that resonated with me. And yes, I see guest 62 writes grotesque is also beauty. And yes, I agree with that. Um, I mean, I, there's a lot of work that many people haven't seen that, um, that are not familiar with, like in social media world and stuff where, um, where I did take a lot of grotesque images. So like, um, that were kind of beyond the pale of my, of maybe what you would see in a gallery and, um, create sort of a commentary on it. Um, and, but, uh, but, and, and, and part of that was a way for me to see how I can take 
um, things that aren't uh, kind of like socially um, uh, accepted as art and seeing what I can what I can push with that. I, an event that transpired around the time you were 25 that kind of pushed you into becoming an artist and embracing it more? Yeah, there was an event. There was there was one particular event that was consequential and that, I mean, that was, uh, it was, uh, I, I, I got a leg injury, which, um, which up until then, you know, I think my whole notion of identity was based around like, like athleticism, like aggressions, kind of like sports oriented things that I, that I see a lot of like male peers, uh, young male peers, uh, taking an interest in but i would and and by that i mean like skate culture snowboard culture or whatever it is you know um and uh um uh, and so i uh i think when um a significant injury happened to me i i had to rethink what my identity was centered like what what is my identity and and my identity um the sort of the conclusions I was coming with was like living a creative life to me was important, was paramount to how I wanted to conduct myself. And so art as um, as a means like as like drawing and the actual art making and that kind of that little world, that community of artists that that's I see that as sort of a um, uh kind of an extension of a of a larger umbrella theme of living creatively and i'm fortunate to be able to uh, maintain a livelihood with um you know with the things that i do you know with the fact that i make art when you're in, actually in front of these pieces they are uh, you do find imperfections with the work like they're made to look like they are um, kind of machine uh, machine routed or machine drawn uh, with that idea of perfection and harmony. But as you get up close to them, you start to see uh, uh, examples of the hand. You see like think little little elements of my handwork where I might be off by the slightest of margins. And also, I want to I want to. Uh, point out, I don't know how to draw a straight line without help. You know, like I need a straight edge. Um, I need a straight edge in order to produce these lines. So I'm creating these like uh, these seemingly architectural drawings. You know, um, uh, a straight line for me it is wonky and weird, and I'm okay with that. You know. Not sure if um, I and, and by the way, I hope that you all can hear me okay. Um, yes, I can hear you. Um, Guest fifty eight just asked, "Is there a spiritual meaning in your work?" Oh yeah, um, that does that does come up. Um, boy, you know, um, I know it's easy to uh, like when you see these pieces that have um, you know. Uh, what's it called, uh, symmetry and harmony in the work. Um, and that, you know, often they can allude to these more like uh, metaphysical or spiritual themes. Um, I think that that's, that's always fascinating. I personally am not spiritual per se, uh, in the sense like I don't, you know, it's like, I mean, I don't pray and I don't, I don't do the things that I think people associate spirituality with. Um, but I've, you know, um, perhaps, uh, an, another way to answer that would be like, I, I might also not be meditative, but this is going to be the closest thing I come to a meditative practice, a Zen that I otherwise don't, uh, like really possess in myself, if that makes sense. I, I've grown up, I grew up with, with, uh, kind of an affinity towards aggression, whether that be through like playing sports or like 
getting into trouble or like the music, I, you know, just whatever shit you would associate aggression with. That's kind of, uh, that's kind of the, um, that has always been something I grew up um, gravitating towards. So uh, it's, I think personally, this becomes, you know, not just the aesthetics, but it start, it does start to take on uh, this idea of like even therapy, you know. So, um, so maybe that's how I would look at this work more specifically for myself. Is like art as therapy, art as meditative, um, uh, art as a, like a practice. Like the, you know, you look around and you're seeing repetition. You're seeing re like redundancy, and those things resonate with me. I I didn't realize how much. Uh, I would love the repetition of things like I do with this work, you know, with making the work, not just the work itself. Question. Um, Guest 52 says, I've read all art is political, whether you intend it to be or not. Assuming it's true, what political commentary, if any, do you feel that your work is making? Oh man, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, uh, and that's, you know, it's it's one of those things where if I say oh, I don't know, not art is not all art is political. That starts to take on a subjective. Um, that's that's of course my subjectivity. Um, you know, it, it's like if I were to, maybe it's harder to answer that question for me personally when I'm looking at the work. But if I were to talk, speak on art as a political practice in the sense of making the work, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think when I um, kind of um, had those consequential events that led to my kind of reshaping my identity, um, like I said, when I was 25 years old, and up until then, I had not, I wasn't creating art. Um, it was, it, it became, um, like art making became a political act in a sense. Like I, I you know, I grew up um, working in factories, working shitty jobs in warehouses, and I was so miserable. And um, and so for me, cre um, I think the practice of making art and figuring out how the hell to like to get involved in some community, um, uh, I think was. Um, to me, in my own way, a political act, I guess, you know, uh, um, like I felt like not working a nine to five, not um, going into debt, not like creating conditions for myself where I was able to forge my own path in my existence. To me, that was bucking what um, what my small town of Woodland like what in general some of the people I like went like grew up with uh, their notion of success and their their like how they viewed um, how they viewed like the weirdos in society which I I they are like the weirdos are, are who what uh, already resonated with me um, so uh, so I, I'd like to think that you know it's more of the act of making work and being involved in shit like this, that's that's where the art, uh, the uh, the kind of art as a political, um, art as political kind of, uh, that's where I, that's where my mind goes with that. That's a good question, thank you. Can you speak a little bit more on um, how travel sort of opened you up to a larger perspective? Oh man. Um, you know, uh, you know, travel. I think it. You know, it, it carries all the uh, all the ideas that we all know. You know, where it's like, oh, you get to see a worldview that's outside of your own, and that is paramount. Like that's that is there's a you know there's a reason that's uh, it's almost you're almost tired of hearing that because it's so true. You know. So with that said, you know, um, I mean, it it shapes. It, you know, it's like I realize how little I know about not just myself, but like kind of like what I want to get out of life in general. And I think that that 
is, um, you know, that's a, like, that's profound, you know? And so again, you know, I, I have two daughters who are teenagers and uh, several years ago, I was like, you know what, fuck this. Like, let's, let's make you guys global citizens. Like, let's have you realize how easy it is for you to see the world. I mean, it takes a budget, it takes planning, it takes all these things, like the logistics, it takes those things to fall into place. And it's kind of like intimidating and scary. But, um, but I wanted to show them like, you can do this shit. Like, you just have to put, you know, you just have to take care of your affairs and, and line up your shit. And you can do this. It's easier than you think. And before you know it, you're somewhere completely different and uncomfortable. And so, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, you know, the takeaway is those things like the open that like it opens your horizons, that whole thing. But it also makes you appreciative of like what you have at home, you know, or it makes you realize like, fuck, I want more. Like, I want more out of this. Um, so, you know, I mean, I don't know that that's that answers sort of the art question per se. Like, I don't know that it's like, so therefore my art is about that. It's not so much that as it is like, just like, I mean, I just want to keep being like weird. I just want to keep like, I want to be okay with like, not, um, not just following a very linear notion of like what I would just want to get out of my life. I, I want to constantly be surprised and dazzled and amazed and, and, and also impressed with like, you know, like with other people's talents. Um, what would you classify as the weirdest thing about yourself? Shit. Woo. Fuck. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's like, um, maybe it's like, shit, I don't know what's weird. Like, if we're talking like kink weird, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know that I want to speak on that right now with uh, my daughter's present. But, um, but uh, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's like I'm an old man trapped in a, you know, like in a juvenile kid's mind where I'm like, I want to do fun, dumb stuff, but my back hurts and my knees ache and I have to wear orthopedic shoes and shit, you know? Um, so it's, uh, I, I, man, that's a hard question. It's like one of those questions where I, I we could sit here and ruminate all day on what that means. You know? I was just wondering, cause you, you brought up the term weird a lot. So I wondered how you defined weird, like what, oh, yeah. what yeah, weird okay. is to you? Yeah, for sure. You, um, yeah, I use weird uh, loosely, broadly, and in, in the positive content. You know, it's like weird to me is positive, um, um, and uh, weird should be normal. Like the weirdos in my life um, are far less weird and far more normal, like quote normal, than than. Uh, then maybe society in general might give them credit for. So I, I love the, the word weird is one of my favorite words. It's just like, um, but, but it is just like this broad term, you know. Um, also, in terms of the discomfort that traveling brings up for you to, to pivot back to that, um, when you're working with blocks that might come up with you in your life or in your work, how do you move past those? Are there any tools that you use or have you had any pieces that have been particularly tough and how did you get through it? Oh man, you know, I mean, of course, with everything everybody has had to kind of deal with the last couple of years, you know, all those things. Um, it affected me too, in, in where like I lost a lot of work, and I was, um, I, I mean, I lost all work essentially. And so, um, you know, I honestly went. I mean, it, you know, like like many others, like many of you or many of your friends, like I went into a depression, and um, you know, wasn't in a good like interpersonal space with other people either. So I think that kind of 
uh, like I sunk even further into uh, an abyss. And, um, and so, um, uh, so, you know, I think one of the things that disrupted me was the fact that I was really essentially making work for like projects or for deadlines or for whatever, because I just had those things lined up. So I didn't really, I had kind of for a while stopped making work for myself. And even if it's the same work that I like back then that I do now, my met like my objective for making the work was a little bit different. And so I think I started to go back into this idea of like art as therapy and art for the sake of making it just to see what it looked like. And I think that it um, it slowly just like kind of brought me back to life. And um, and I started like the cloud slowly parted and I was able to like um, kind of get back to this place where the meditative practice, the 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 end result where I could pick up this piece and admire it and, and to, to be able to proudly say, fuck, this is me. Like this is my work. I'm proud of it. I love looking at it and and um, and I'm doing this for myself. I think really kind of helped me to get back into sort of like the rhythm that I'm at now. So, um, so yeah, uh, Courtney, uh, you know, um, hitting those blocks yeah, it sort of gutted me, to be honest. Like I couldn't do jack shit for a while and I had to like come back to this place and it took me a long time. I mean, it took me a year and a half perhaps or longer to just be able to make peace with things that were out of control in my life and to start to make uh, art because I loved to, to make it. And slowly the job, like the projects came back and, and you know, like, and by the time those things started to roll back in, I was already ready to go again. Hey, Jose, we had a question earlier in the text feed uh, yeah. from a guest of what would be your ultimate art project? Ooh. Oh boy, um, you know, I think because, you know, scale, um, scale and the scope of something is, um, you know, people see like maybe like a magnum opus, like the, the quintessential experience of somebody's work, like, at, like as a scale thing. So it's like, if I were to make minuscule paintings, people might not say that is the Matt Jose's finest work you know i mean i'm generalizing here but um so uh, but uh you know when people see pieces of my like my murals because i do a lot of murals is uh, along with paintings um and i've done large murals i mean i've done murals that like uh wrapped around an entire building you know and things like that um those tend to be the pieces that like resonate well not just with me but with that resonate with the uh, viewers they're like shit dude how do, sort of like the how how did you do it uh, comes into play it's like what is the process how, and, and you know the physicality the like uh, you know the materials like how many paint cans do you have to use um the the things in order to achieve like like how do you draw a straight line on a 14 foot straight edge you know like how does how does that work so that it lines up well so it doesn't fall on the ground you know shit like that so um so i think that um to to answer the you know like to answer that question it's like the ultimate art project it's like i think it might be kind of one of those like mural specific um projects where it's like i mean look at the nft piece and uh, if you look at that door as like for scale and if that was like a seven foot door and that shit is like whatever like 70 feet high i i mean i'm guessing i mean think of that as a mural i mean that's like epic as fuck and so uh, so it's 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 like uh so and and not to mention not just that i i should add that along with uh what courtney had asked earlier about travel it's like it's not just the piece itself it's like the entire experience like um i've been fortunate enough to do some projects like in finland and sweden and stuff like that and it's like 
when I'm at the airport waiting for my flight, I'm like, what is life? This is crazy. Like, I really get to fly to these countries and do this shit? It's so mind blowing. Like, I, I'm, I'm so grateful and fortunate that I think that people, like when I show up to a space, like I'm, I'm like, I couldn't hug you hard enough where I'm like, fuck, thank you. Like, what the hell is this? This is the craziest thing. So, um, so it's, I think it's like, that is, those are ultimate art experiences. Like, it's not just like, I just clocked in and I'm about to put that paintbrush on the wall. It's like everything. It's like sleeping in, in a, in a cot and being a little bit uncomfortable and being like, but I'm here in this weird other country and this is fucking crazy. What are some of the craziest experiences that you've had doing murals overseas? Um, you know, uh, shoot um you know of course there's all the more nuanced not crazy things that are still like beautiful and wonderful and weird and cool and um you know um but uh shit you know um that's a hard one to answer i i don't know that i can think off the top of my head of a crazy experience um um, the weirdest place you've had to sleep or were there any projects that took much longer than you anticipated? I know that you had one um, in Sacramento, I think, that <laughs> involved you contorting yourself into so many different positions just to lay it out correctly. Oh, oh shit. shit, and that's all the time, too. Um, you know, um, like Art Basel in Miami, um, uh, I was fortunate enough to to attend for a couple years and now I was um, invited by Hannah Stauffer with H plus creative who's like a dear homie of mine I love Hannah um, she um, you know she invited me out there and there was a and I did a mural uh, on the side of this building um, and um, if you haven't been to it uh, to like Art Basel or Miami during Art Basel it's kind of a shit show and um and so watching taggers tag the shit out of a neighbor's uh, newly finished mural is kind of like kind of sucks but it's scary too because you're like fuck just please don't do it to my shit and sure enough um um i was there one year with uh, miles tolan uh, another dear friend of mine immensely talented from nevada city the guy is a machine. He is, he just does absolutely gorgeous work. And him and I did a collaborative mural and it was really fun. And, you know, it's like, we were just dinking around, creating uh, some fun shit and um, worked on a piece overnight, get it finished late in the morning, go get like, br not br like breakfast or whatever, come back. And I'm not kidding, like an hour and a half or two hours after we finished that fucking mural and walked away, somebody had tagged it and 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 i don't mean like a little little like somebody drew a little dick or something like somebody tagged the fuck out of it and that was like that was insane and you just have to like it's like you have to just let go you have to just be like well i mean i'm certainly not gonna paint over that tag you know I, um so that piece is done like that piece just becomes ephemeral and that's okay so um yeah, entropy. Uh, uh, guess fifty-eight. I see that. Yeah, ag absolutely. It's just like it's okay. I, I've come to terms so many times with um, with that ephemeral nature of art. Um, you know, I did another project. Uh, I'll I'll say this real quick. Uh, in Helsinki, Finland, the first time I went there, it was with this gallery, Third Space Gallery, and the um, the project, like the entire project was a one day show so i flew all the way out there i was there two weeks i had problems with spray paint i was like oh my god i was working morning till night i essentially was living in that space I, you know um i mean it was like it was a monster project to to paint this gallery for a one day show that was sparsely attended and then they they painted over the entire gallery the next day and that but that was the agreement so it was like, 
So I wasn't like, oh man, come on. It was like, well, that's that's what I came here for, and that's okay. So, you know, I mean, you know, I think I've come to terms long ago with like the ephemeral nature of my my work、uh, sometimes, and that's okay. I feel like that is a, a thing that happens a lot to muralists, but also, I mean, I've been privy to an experience of a crazy work that you've done just being painted white. So yeah, I mean, the first time that it happened, do you remember what canvas or mural that was, and were you disheartened?、Uh, in my like with my work, yeah.、Um, you know, I don't, I can't think of anything. You know, aside from. Uh, you know, I'm sure when I was like, I went to art school. I went to Heron School of Art in Indianapolis,、uh, and I was there,、um, you know, from 2001 to 2006. And、um, you know, I had I had pieces that,、um, you know, because I didn't understand material that,、uh, you know, like I might have been mostly finished, and then I I apply a solvent on on the、uh, On the quote finished piece, and then it smears the whole painting, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" You know, like I can't even believe all that work went into that, only to to see it disappear. But、um, but you know, I mean, that was early on.、Um, you know, I've done projects, of course, where I've had、um, like, well, I, obviously, I mentioned a couple of,、uh, I mentioned the being tagged over and stuff like that, and.、Uh, And、um, and that's a、uh, you know that's a that's a that's okay. Can you guys hear me by chance?、Um, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank. Thank you, guys. Sorry, I I I got sidetracked because I wasn't sure if、uh, if you all can hear me. Thank you. Yes. Um. um. Oh, go ahead, Courtney. I'm so sorry. Oh no! What were you gonna say? I did see a question, and I'm and I apologize. I I I was looking at it really quickly.、Uh, it was like, what was your first memory?、Uh, like your first memorable art piece?、Um, and that is a good question. And and I have to be honest, it's one that I hadn't really like reflected on very much at all.、Um, you know, I think early on.、Um, I'm gonna kind of like revert back to、uh, something I said earlier, where I didn't grow up in, in art per se. Like,、uh, you know, my parents were immigrants, and they worked in the fields and factories, and they, like, you know, I was the oldest of five kids, and we were. It was a dysfunctional bunch. I mean, we were kind of a hoarder family,、uh, and and there was sort of a lot of chaos, and、um, and there was definitely no. There was no nothing to suggest what art was, you know. Like that, I had no basis on that,、um, and so I think that art for me, my first experiences was album art before skateboard art was like old、um, heavy metal albums or or punk rock. Like in the back of Barney's Records in Woodland, this little record shop, and this was in the eighties.、Um, They had in the back of the shop is where they held the punk rock and metal and thrash、uh, albums, the records, and I was、uh, I was so drawn to that, and、um, and so you know I couldn't afford to purchase the music, but I just could sit there for for p- long periods of time and just like and admire like Winston Smith. He did he did collages for the Dead Kennedys. Um, Pusshead did some work.、Um, I'm trying to think of some of the albums he did work for,、uh, like the Misfits uh, albums um, and a Black Flag, like、uh, Ray Pettibon,、uh, like and that's like kind of like bad drawing, but it was like, but it was like accessible because, you know, there was a part of me was like, I I think I can do stuff like that,、um, but of course he's telling he's telling these like really rich stories with just like one. One,、um, you know, with just one album、uh, piece. So、uh, I think those are kind of the earliest ideas of like it, 
I, not that I was like, is this art? I don't think this is art. I, there wasn't a critique as much as there was just sort of like a, a just like an aesthetic um, admiration and just like uh, just uh, an, a, a curiosity about it. And I would have been around um, eight, nine, ten years old. So. What was your um, greatest role model when you were little? Ooh. You know, it's hard because I, I, uh, I didn't have a lot. Um, you know, maybe you know, only because this comes to mind because he recently passed away. Um, it uh, the um, what's his name from Sesame Street the. Um, he was the, um, uh, let's see, I'm looking up his, uh, his name right now. <laughs> uh, Jim Hinton. Uh, what's that? Jim Hinton? No, no, it's not a, uh, it's not a, uh, the puppeteer. Uh, Emilio, oh. Emilio Delgado. Um, so he played um, a fix it shop owner, Luis, right? So, um, so, uh, so he to me represented like what a good like quote man uh, was, you know. And me being, uh, you know, this was where, where it was like an era when there was like a lot of gender specificity. Like like people were you're like if you were a boy, you were. Uh, and I really admired him being like just a good human, you know, as a male figure. And so, you know. Uh, I think I needed, I needed that, uh, uh, I needed somebody like that. It, it wasn't somebody that was like creative or anything like that per se, as it was just somebody that was just good, like a good, a good human, you know, some, somebody that represented, um, you know, um, you know, peace and tranquility, like within their lives. It's just like goodness. And I, that was something that I was sorely lacking. What is the first thing that you do when you go into the studio in the morning? And is it the morning? Is a question from the audience. Yeah, I, I see that. Um, right. Yeah, thanks, uh, guest 87. Um, so, you know, it's more of like my, like, what is my day to day? So, uh, again, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm the father of two teenage daughters. So I have to uh, juggle, uh, you know, I'm juggling a lot of different roles. So, you know, um, you know, um, whether it's like taking the girls to school, you know, uh, boring, like dad shit like that. Um, and then, um, so when I get home, it's like coffee, breakfast, that kind of thing. And, um, even I have, I live in a three bedroom, uh, apartment in a mixed income art space in Sacramento. And so like my rent is cheap and I'm grateful for this space. And, uh, so the master bedroom is my working studio. The thing is, is that, um, you know, right now it's more of a storage facility where I'm just like, kind of like housing um, a bunch of work and a bunch of different things and like camping equipment and stuff like that. Um, so it's, so the, my living room space is more of, it, that, that's my working studio. So I do have a spray paint like quote booth in um in that in my studio um and so um and so um so if i have to spray paint i go in there if i'm working um on drawing i have a sort of a, a desk with caster wheels that i just sit and i tend to I, like i watch tv shows or listen to metal or punk rock or something while i'm creating the work and it's you know it's like my refuge um uh, so I'm, I spend most of my day in my living room, um, you know, um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of in a nutshell what, you know, what it is, but yeah, it's like living room, sit down on the desk, um, watching shit, listening to music, and then just drawing on my like 
on my desk that's like dad's desk you know it's uh, it's it's my desk it's like my office you know um and also do you use art to work things out in your life slash head slash thoughts uh that's a good question thanks so much and we uh should we maybe rat like uh uh, wrap up with this question and, and perhaps one more is that is that yeah i think like we could just take a few more questions and then wrap it up terrific definitely. okay yeah and oh shit i already what was the question again oh my god um do you use art to work through things in your head slash thoughts slash yes <laughs> yeah thanks thank you um yeah i mean for sure i i do um um i mean I, it's such a permeated part of my life. Like it's, it's, I mean, making things like, a, like a, uh, I'll say like making things special, like creating alchemy, like this thing of making things out of nothing is fucking weird and awesome. And so, um, so yes, it is. But then again, it also like, I think sometimes like taking a step away from any sort of art practice and like, you know, doing, doing things that have nothing to do with art um, is also part of a process of like learning about myself and learning about what I want. Um, so it is, uh, you know, I mean, and th there could be several like uh, effects from that, you know, where it's like one might be the like, then it just makes me even more eager and hungry to like get back and work if I'm if I'm spending a bit of time away from it. Um, and and also it's like, you know, of course, it's like a reset, like a decompression of sorts. Um, I get, you know, like needless to say, you know, like especially with like murals and whatnot, I get tired, I get exhausted physically and and you know like mentally from from like this constant uh maybe this uh concentration on what i'm doing and so i do take a lot of breaks um and but with that said i'm never like necessarily frustrated i'm more just like fatigued but also always reminding myself like this is what i love to do and so maybe that's like uh, by extension, it, it's it also it, it also um, flows into other inner workings of my life where I'm like like where I'm like at peace with things that are not in my control or if I'm tired or my back hurts, I'm like it's all right. Like, and I think it helps me to maintain that calm that I didn't have in the past over like over just like decisions I make in my life. 100. <laughs> um, thank you for that question. And we can take a few more questions from the audience if anyone has any. Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up. Oops. I will say, you guys, uh, you know, thank you guys so very much. I, 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 I really can't express how a beautiful and bizarre this whole thing is. Like, I, that you would um, give time to, you know, like to hear what like what I have to think and say about these things. Um, you know, I, you know, half the time I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just sort of like I'm just making the things that I like to make and and kind of like honing in on new discoveries and ways of like making the work and that somehow I'm fortunate enough to create it as a, as a livelihood. And, you know, it's it's just nothing but gratitude always. I mean, I'm confident in the work that I do. I'm confident in my abilities uh, in this style of work. But with that said, it's, it's like, you know, it's like 100% confidence and 100% gratitude. You know, it's just, I, I, you know, it's like this world is, is crazy and it's like I get to somehow participate in cool, rad shit like this. So thank you so much. 
thank you for creating such sick art that looks amazing on any you know, digital or physical or wall or entire interior. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Th thank you all. I mean, it, it really is so meaningful. I mean, and if I think of legacy, you know, like what is what is the legacy I want to leave? That kind of thing. It's like it's always centered around like how I want to raise my daughters. Like I want them to see like you like it, shit is work and shit is not as like glamorous as you think. It you have to roll up your sleeves and you have to work tirelessly and you have to like figure this thing out. But you can do it. And uh, and so I you know, um, I think through my actions like that, it's, you know, it's my daughters, it's my friends, it's, it's, you know, I love being able to just ask everybody else how they're doing, you know, just be like, fuck, man, how's your life? Like, your life is crazy, too. This is, this is cool, you know, so doing my best to, like, to, inst like, to just, like, extend that to others has just been such a privilege, you know.